He brought him on in Large Styles, Rosenberg, and our brother Common back yeah. on the program. Yeah. 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 Now, he, he, he claimed they gave us a paper, and it says here at the top, um, <laughs> Common <laughs> is ready to share his secret to self-care success. <laughs> Yo, man. The award-winning rapper, actor, and activist has written a new health and wellness book. <laughs> and Then We Rise. Yes. I love the title, by the way. Thank you, thank you. Which will be released January 2024. Uh, People exclusive reveals. This is according to People. And you talk about during the pandemic, you focused on putting out good energy, blah, 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 cooking healthy meals, working out, personal trainer, Yancey Berry, uh, I actually talked to you yeah, with Lauren, Lauren Vanderpool yeah, yeah, about Lauren, you know Lauren. eating green and yeah. you know what I mean, getting away from uh, animal products. And wait, are you vegan? Yeah, I'm vegan, but I, you know, I've been back and forth with like fish and eating vegan. But this this whole thing is to me is just about like, man, what can I do to take care of myself? Right, like, right, and right. I, I'm like, this book ain't like about me, it's kind of like, okay, I'm telling some of the stories of things like the first time I even heard a vegetarian was through. KRS One saying that in in my philosophy, right. so I didn't start off like just drinking green drinks, but I'm talking about my experiences, so I can like encourage people to be like, yo, what can I do to take care of myself? Because with all that's going on in the world and all the things that's like you know this the division and all the stuff we hear over and over, I feel like the the one thing that we got is ourselves, like to yeah. be able to like get our minds in the, like, this, this is not just, like, only about eating, too. It's, like, it's about, okay, like, mental health, like, having therapy. I definitely have used therapy and continue to. It's also about, like, making sure spiritually I'm sound, you know, mm-hmm. and got that that foundation and how they all connect. So I kind of just wanted to, I felt like I've been blessed to have access to certain things, like Lauren Vanderpool, um, who's she a from chef, DC, a vegan by the way, chef. Too, yeah, yeah she's from DC. Is she a nutritionist? Yeah. Or what does yeah, she, she, she do? I think, I mean, she is a, a nutritionist now, but she's a chef. Yeah, right? oh, okay, she's, okay. Yeah, and she's from like the hood in DC, but she, you know, evolved into learning her things and spreading the word too. It's kind of, to me, it's a way for us to help out our communities, but just help ourselves and just, that's why I called it, and then we rise. It's like, Yo, the higher I get within myself, the more I can raise up my family and yeah. my loved ones. So, anyway, that's what the the book is on. And um, you know, like I never was taught taught about self love early on. I ain't them ain't words I heard. And I think like the more and more I hear that, I'm like, yeah, that's what I need to be applying. Like the confidence that I always wanted in myself, or the things that I like wanted to put out in the world. If without me taking care of myself. Like I say, it ain't no activism without self-activism. You know, like, I could be doing a lot of things, but if I ain't giving that love to self, and I'm talking about the simple things, like, people be like, man, I I I can't afford a chef, but I'm like, yo, uh, you can get up in the morning and decide, I'm I'm going to take this time to chill and pray or read something that that, that reinforces me. Before I get online, before I do anything, I'm going to do something for myself. A little push-ups, workouts, ain't you know, mm-hmm. a walk, you know, simple things, adding some water and and um even and like vegetables. a five minute meditation. Yo, my I do a meditation, it's only about two minutes. It ain't like you know, <laughs> but it's a little something. It's, it's a yeah. little something. It's a no, little it something. I, yeah. I, and, I, and, I, and all this stuff is like I just picked up stuff. Me, yo, Ebro, when you was talking, you, you, we was talking, when we was talking with Lauren, you was like, yo, don't you you said do not underestimate rest. Oh yeah, we we have a lot of rest yeah. talk. Yeah, rest yeah. talk is yo, and that that resonated with me. I pick up things and I just like, okay, what what resonates? What keeps me like? Well, and the at my thing highest. about rest, right, is a lot of times people go, you know, um, I get a great night's sleep, yeah. right, which is cool, yeah. right, and and great. Let me not even say it's cool; it's great. But leading into that sleep, did you have a proper wind down, or did you just like fall asleep? Like you were so exhausted, you just went like, yeah. and like fell apart, yeah. right? Um, preventing that, you know, failure in your physical before you actually get into it, and you can actually ease into that sleep by laying down, maybe a two, three minute meditation, calming down. You know, what I mean? like yeah. not things, scrolling your phone for an hour phone, before yeah. you yeah, fall asleep. Like, yeah. Put your phone down and just like vibe for a second with yourself. But some people, too many people, have never been taught how to do that. Like Man. one of the things that I often ask people that are I can't sleep is. Can you sit still and be quiet, do nothing mm-hmm. for yeah. 10 minutes? Yeah. Like, yeah. you don't have to meditate, but can you literally just sit, think for five to 10 minutes? And there's so many people who cannot do that. Or they can't go to sleep without the TV being on. Right. Man, I, man, 
I love being able to get still, man. And and point blank, the pandemic kind of like helped me in that way where it was like, oh man, I really love. Cause I used to think, man, I gotta always be on the move to be mm -hmm. successful. Mm -hmm. Like this is what this is how we do it. We grind. And then you know the pandemic sat us all down, and it was like. Man, this feels good to just have some time to like breathe and like, okay, what am I gonna do for the day? And like, sometimes I have nothing to do for the day. Them days are, are incredible. And like going over to London, you know, working and stuff. I was like, man, these people, man, take what they call holidays. They they don't like work like we work. Like they don't put like all those hours in. They make sure. I seen people on on the set of Silo, who I know is like working on the crew. They ain't making a lot of money. Tell me, like, yo. We about to take 30 days to go on this trip and just like take a holiday. I'm like, how can you afford that? But they make sure that they just able to do that for themselves. I'm Meanwhile, like, we even when we know people ourselves included who can afford it, yeah. we don't do we it. We don't do because it because we can't. We feel like we have to go all the time. Point blank. I remember. Um, I I talk about it in the book where one time I was sitting. We was it was a dinner with like Nas and Jay Z and, and Steve Style. We was all sitting around and uh. And I was Jay Z was saying, like, man, something about a vacation or whatever. And I was like, man, I don't be taking no vacation. He was like, what? You you tripping? Like, like, what's up with you, bro? Like, it ain't about that. You gotta like take some time yeah. Yeah. to to yourself. And I was like, I was listening, like, you know, when he's saying something, I'm like, okay, let me listen to this brother. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like things have worked out well. Exactly, for you. <laughs> exactly. So it's like you know, learning. Learning those things, we learn from a lot of people. One of my good friends, one of my best friends is like, speaking of going to sleep, he was like, man, before you go to sleep, just say some good things about yourself. Mm. And I was like, wow, I never even thought about that. But if it works for you, like to me, self-care, self-love is really about what works for you. Like, and what your vision for yourself is. Like, where, what, you know, like Rosenberg, where I want to get to. Like this, and, and you might say, okay, well, this this vegan lifestyle ain't for it ain't for me, but maybe this this is drinking this water for these days, or me meditating here, or you know, some people like to walk, some people like to exercise, some people you ride the bike, some yeah. people, you know, it's just choosing the things that's gonna work for you to be your highest self. But if you don't give yourself any, like I have one close, very close friend in particular who I'm always on about taking care of himself. Yeah, it's very successful, works super hard, never stops. Yeah, and whenever I try to be like. Maybe you could get an hour a week, whether it's a trainer, a therapist, yeah. any version yeah. of it. I'm not even yeah. telling you. I'm just saying one one thing. Because you invest so much time yeah. in other things, yeah. but if you don't invest one hour a week in and just your physical yeah. well-being, mental health, how can you ever dude, expect it to be good? Dude, I'd be Damn. like, I'd be like, man, I I don't care how early I gotta do something in the morning. I get up and make sure I got my time to myself. Because, man, we get up in the day and we're giving a lot, like the, the work we do, but just people. Like, you at a job, you're doing this, you're giving a lot. Like, if you feed yourself, you'll be that much better with in, in all you're doing. So yep. that's, that's what I'm on. Well, listen, man, uh, we're proud of you. Thank you. You know, we're happy for you. <laughs> um, Thank you. And uh, it's a part of this journey inclusive of... Your new relationship. I knew, I knew it was gonna be a nasty <laughs> transition. I knew, uh, yo, you I saw, it, you saw, it, you saw, it, you saw. Yeah, yeah, yo, yo, this dude. So shut what up. I was really gonna do is go. Well, is this what you went on your woman's show to talk about? And then she ended up asking you, "Was you in a relationship?" Yeah. And I was like, "Why is she setting dude up like that?" <laughs> well, you know, she wanted yeah. to see how you was gonna answer, or no. y'all, you knew this was gonna happen. No, nah, no, nah, it was more. I think, I think it was more like, okay, this is what's going on. Let us just express it how we want to express it. it. And it was, you know, on her so show. So it, it absolutely wasn't, ladies, he's mine now, and I'm going to show you he's mine. No, 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 I think she was more like, you know, you know, people seeing us out. You know, we, we both kind of private people in that way. Chicago, man, we hold it down, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But so, so it was more like, yeah, let's just, you know, let's have fun. Be ourselves, but you know this is the way we gonna express what's going on. Are you guys official? Like in Chicago, are you guys like a power couple now? You, it's like Michelle, Barack, <laughs> Jennifer, <laughs> Archie. That that double date could happen. It yeah, could. that could happen for real. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. We, hey, um, you know, we we let me say this: we proud to both be from Chicago, and I always respect it. Like I, when I first saw her, I was like, man, she is dope. Like, and and I. She come from Inglewood, like that ain't no joke, man. And I was like, this woman got something about her that's soulful. But you know, we never connected in that way. And then, um, you know, we did some work together, but not a lot. And now it's just like, man, it's just a, a 
somebody who I truly do respect. We building, you know, keeping it, keeping it chill, keeping it, you know, I don't talk too much about it, but but I'm grateful. And, I, and um, it is dope to be from, it's something about somebody from, you know, when you meet people from where you're from, you kind of, y'all got an unspoken, like, language mm-hmm. that's there. And it's something right. about that, that that's kind of cool, man, because I, I don't think I've been in a relationship with anybody from Chicago and... Since I, since high school, <laughs> wow, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's real. So it feels like it feels like home. Like this feels. It, man, it's a it's a it's a great space. Like she definitely is, you know. Just certain things we've grown up, we can reference Chicago radio, Chicago music, certain food places. But just beyond that, it's like, you know, because in in life, when you're choosing people you want to be around, you want people that have values that that, that you share and, you know and um you know more than anything i think she's just a really good human being like and a good person and like um you know i seen her on the on a movie set that we were working on we did this film called breathe and um man the way she was treating people i was like Yo, i like when I, I love when i'm around people who like have status and blah 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 but they just human beings. Right. Yeah, right. so, um, you know, she got that down-to-earthness that, that I feel a lot of Chicagoans carry. She going um, to be on a song, on the album, or, you know? Man, we, yeah, we been, I mean, we 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 cooking, we thinking about something right now that that, that, that will work, you know, because, man, when I do music, it gotta, I don't care who you are, you gotta, it got to fit. But we got something that I think is is definitely right for her. Okay. And we're going to take it some places. So now, and on that, there is music that you're making. It's, can you talk about uh, who oh, yeah, you're working for, with? Yeah, I'm working with Pete Rock, the legend, yeah. legendary Pete Rock, the timeless Pete Rock. And, man, it's like this music, you know, with, with us going through that 50th year of hip-hop, just celebrating all that music, you know, we were there at Yankee Stadium mm-hmm. just watching I was like, man, hip hop is just amazing, man. Like to hit, like it, it, it revitalized certain things in me, and also just made me know it's a, it's an audience out there that just want hip hop, that loves hip hop, like and loves rhymes and stuff. So, man, I got inspired, and I've been Pete and I have been talking about doing something, but um, we never, we had only did like the bitch and you, and I rhymed on one of his um on his first on his first um, I didn't solo Pete releases. Did one of the Pete. seminal disc records. What do you mean? Yeah. You didn't realize that's I just never. Man, Pete. Yeah. Pete. I mean, I remember it now that he says it, but it wasn't like a part of my. Yeah, because it rocked it. It didn't. It, 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 it didn't sound like a normal Pete Rock beat. It did. Course, it did. Course, doom, doom, doom. Because it, it, that was at the time it, when he was still in his horn bag yeah, and kind of that stuff. Yeah, exactly. And then he, with that, it was super slow. It was and, slow. It just had a. It had a bass line, yeah, but big it was bass different. Line. Yeah. But um, wait, he, is this project both of you? The whole album is going to be Pete Rock common. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. And, and it's like what I'm realizing just is how much. Like when you've been ingrained in hip hop so much and soul music, like how much it just you just breathe it, you live it. Like I'm w- working with him and I'm watching him chop up beats and chop up samples, and I'm like, man. And and the music feel like it could exist in any era, just of just greatness. It's making me realize that, and just I'm just having enjoying it. These rhymes is real, yo. Ebro ain't gonna forget me on the top fifty list no more after after this. <laughs> I forgot that was another one of your Clary Harris. I don't forget that. <laughs> Him and Q-Tip. You left Q-Tip? You yeah, left yeah, Q-Tip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that fail. was the handwritten joint that we did that one morning yeah, yeah, yeah. where we were just rushing through it and I threw yeah. it on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but yeah. now, so, um, when you see Andre 3000 and you see, like, these artists that we love making pivots, musical pivots, and you've made musical yeah. Pivots and yeah. went on tangents too. Yeah. Um, never as far as a flute. N- never as far as playing flutes, but you <laughs> know, you was you he, stood in yarn pants on the front lawn. Yeah. No, he wore the yarn pants. He went he went into I, like I weird Pharrell, what like Pharrell experimental. Yeah, 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 you know. Yeah, I was in my own. I was in my no, own. No, but that's thing. cool. Yeah, yeah it was. And, and it was. As you, even right now, there's a lot of celebration for for what we're seeing with Andre 3000, yeah. right? Like I think yeah. it's a my my personal and uh, is that. You know, this is a precursor to more. I think what you reported, he's going on tour yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. We're going to see him now. So yeah. I'm sure there's some raps he's got in the stash. Yeah. yeah, well, listen. First of all, it's just great to hear something from Andre. To right. me, I mean, I, of course I want to hear his raps. But that dude has been such a creator. Like, if you think about Love Below, man, he just went places. He was singing on that mostly. And the rhymes he kicked was amazing. But, man, the dude is just one of them... Just most one of the most talented dudes yeah. we've experienced in our generation. So when I put on that flute album, I was like, 
yo, this joint is dope to me. And I remember a couple of producers hitting, hitting me up like, man, you could loop some of this Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, oh, it's, 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 it's right. Like, it's right. It's right. So, I mean, I'm glad that he putting out music. I was glad to see him doing interviews because, you know, it's people like him, like D'Angelo and like Lauryn Hill that I just loved. Like, they're some of my favorite artists. Mm. And obviously, Andre is one of the greatest MCs ever. So, when he gets to rapping, we're going we gonna to be geek. Is he, is he one... I know it's hard to ask other MCs this, but is is he one of those MCs who sometimes you hear him do something and you're like, I don't even understand how this dude does what he does. Oh man, it's, he is he, him and Nas for me are the two that I'd be like, damn, like I I wish I wrote that. Like some of the the ways they approach, like Peninsula maybe, but you know, like when he like just words Dre or say or I was thinking that. I was playing, you know, New York State of Mind, and it's just one of the greatest lines ever written is beyond the walls of intelligence, life is defined. Mm -hmm. I think of crime when I'm in a New York State of Mind. It's crazy. That's like beyond the walls of intelligence. That's like poetry. Yeah. That's like American literature that will... If we just wrote that down, and when they put that next to James Baldwin and, and Nikki Giovanni, those those words will will last. Yeah. Those words are timeless. I'm like, and he so, was like 17 I know, when he and wrote this. Think about how old he was at that time. I know. So I, I love. Look, I love hearing that. I love hearing when Cass is rhyming on that level. Even though I'm like, damn, I wish I'd have wrote it. That's what always sparked me to get better. When I heard Nas, I knew I was like, oh, Nas made everybody step it up. But Trey 3000 is like one of them dudes where you like. Man, I, how you think of that? Where did he come from with that? And mm -hmm. how honest he is. But he'll tell a story about him being at Whole Foods. And then you're like, damn, this joint is dope. And it's also like the detail. The yeah. detail, the textures, like it's very vivid. Well, remember, and he went on that feature run. The main one everyone talks about is Walk It Out. Yeah. But it wasn't just Walk It no, Out. No. He went through a, a feature run, like where it seemed like it for fun. 16 ain't enough, he did that. that. And, he, and every one he custom to what the record was. And with body every body. single time. Like it was like he wanted them guys like where you like, man, if you get on a song with him, you gotta really be at your greatest. Cause everybody, you know, cause that this competition in this point blank. So, you know, he gonna everybody gonna go to his verse. So you gotta you, you gotta do something. Do you ever speaking of competition, do you ever like I I wonder if you end up in rooms where you get to show off properly about the the legendary producers that you've had. Not like a moment with, but like you have real, real joints yeah. with Pete, yeah. Premier, Dilla, Kanye, Pharrell. Yeah. I don't want to leave out there are plenty yeah. more. No ID. No ID. No. Oh my God, no ID, of course. Yeah. So, like, that's it. Do you ever think about how crazy it is, how charmed a hip hop life you sort of lived? Man, I, I mean, I was writing one of these joints with for, um, for the joint Pete and I doing, and I was like about to. Shout out some of the producers I work with, and I really kind of thought, like, man, I've worked with Ye. I work with, with Pharrell. I work well, and with you didn't just work with Ye. It should be noted. Ye in his prime. You, yeah. No, no, he, you elevated Ye. Like, you said, my daughter found Nemo. I found the new Primo. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And he was still... He was still in that transition from being a rock Rockefeller guy to being, yeah. like, the guy. Yeah. So you played a big part in that. That wasn't just a nothing. But man, we was it was iron sharp as iron for sure. Cause he was, cause I definitely feel like you know we were contributing to each other. He wrote about that in this this table book. He was like, man, when you get into any type of connection, yo, that person should be adding on to you. You should be adding on to them. And he said how I had added on. I definitely feel like you know my my taste and some of the the. The, the beats, that, I mean, the, the, the loops, the samples I was bringing around was, was inspiration, but he obviously elevated my songs to a whole nother level. Uh, but but then, you were coming off Dilla, too, so you're coming off like Water for Chocolate. Yeah, and Electric Circus. And yeah. Electric Circus. So you've gotten all this experience with these other dudes, Yeah, and, and then you kind of bring that. Bring that to, oh, man, like, to this day, I remember, like, Kanye coming over to the crib where Dilla and I stayed, and then um, it was like, at one point, you know, Dilla had a, <clears throat> excuse me, Dilla had a little bit, he was like, Kanye was sampled some of Dilla's drums off his beat tapes. So well, Dilla, and he, and he, yeah. he's, he openly has admired Dilla's drums. Yeah, like, yeah, right. So, much. so, but anyway, Ye came over, it was Mother's Day, and, and we were going to Mother's Day, like, brunch, me and Ye and his mother and my mother, and, um, and then Dilla was, we was at the crib, 
And Ye came in and Dilla was talking to him and they was just bonding. And then Dilla gave Ye these drums on a record. Like he gave him a record with these drums. He's like, take these drums. And I promise you, Ye was like, it was like the golden chalice. Like he was just like, he went to the studio. We went to the studio later that day and Ye was like, telling like G and all them, like, yo, Dilla gave me these drums. We, I mean, I forgot what song it ended up being, but as soon as we got there, he was working on those. You drums, know, I don't so. know that I, I don't know that people know that they actually had interaction like I like that. You actually watched them have a conversation. I oh, know it was it was in our front room. Yeah, they was just <laughs> it was love. Like Dilla had a lot of love for you. Yeah, and then I and Ye had love for Dilla. So it was great to see like somebody who is as great as Ye just be like. Damn, Dilla gave me these. Like joints. the reverence. Yeah, yeah, like like the reverence and love. So, and man, I'm, I'm like, I've been able to work like with Quest. Quest Love is a genius when it comes to just putting together projects. Like, he is a visionary that it's unprecedented what he can do. Like, as far as just seeing it, whether it's a performance, it could be a freaking book, it could be a, a um an album. Because even to this day, I, I talk to him about like, yo. I want you to um, help me sequence this album because he's just that type of dude. So <clears throat> to be able to work with him, um, no ID, high tech, high tech. High yeah. tech. Oh, high man. tech, man. Cats yeah. be bringing up, like, even Pete was like, yo, 199, man. Like, we like, <laughs> yeah. yo, he was like, yo, I, I need to give you one of those. I was like, yeah, give me one yo, of those. Yo, 1999 <laughs> and Sun God. Sun God, man. I mean, th those are two hammers from high tech. Yo, I was... Yo, I was geeked. High Tech was just, you know, he was from Cincinnati, and that's where I kind of started with my cousin writing my first rap. So I would always be like, yo, Cincinnati means something to me, Tech. And then he eventually, um, you know, I got to be on the song with, with Black Star, with Quai, and, you know. Um, uh, Respiration. Respiration. Yeah. But wow. then High Tech, I, I was, at the time I was doing those joints with High Tech, I was trying to figure out where I was getting signed with, with label, like, because I just got off of Relativity, and I was like, okay, how, what's gonna happen? You know, I just moved to New York. High Tech was giving me them beats. I was like, oh, I'm about to. But did you write consider these signing with Rockets outright or no? I did at one point. I did, but it, I loved how Rockets was doing it at the time because you, you ain't, you ain't have, you just do one offs and it, it was kind of like what the what the music industry became at one point. Like the independent artists, we had. Mm -hmm. It was nobody in there sitting up there saying, yo, you got to bring out this song at this time or this is what, go put this feature on, on your album or on this song. They let the artist be the artist. And really, you, you chose what single you wanted to come out with and they just did it. It was like, it was just for the love of the music, but they just knew how to do it well. But in the end, you decided it didn't make sense to sign with like an indie? Did you just... Yeah, I mean, I, th I think it was like, at the time, MCA, the Roots were really talking to me about like, mm -hmm. man... Man, you should sign with over here. Like it's good, and they had just signed most. They had signed Yasin. He had a label deal over there, and they were. And Wendy Goldstein was the A and R. She was. She just was smart, and I just felt like it would be a chance to get. And the Roots was kind of really like, "Yo, bro, come on over. Here. We gonna." And they were hot at things. that time, and they were yeah. like the MCA act yeah. in that moment. Yeah, so it was like you are gonna get that type of love, and she know the she know the music, and you'll be able to do what you want to do. And that's when we did like, like Water for Chocolate. It worked out. Amazing. <clears throat> worked out. Amazing. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Um, uh, were you privy to this recent most death uh, little in yeah. internet moment? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. I was... With the whole Drake thing, what, what what do you make of that? We debated it a bunch on here about like you know, and not so much even on Drake, right? right. Everybody happy. He's done he's <clears throat> great. Like man. we like his music. He's you know what man. I'm saying. You guys have had your back and forths or whatever, but just hip hop being pop music. Right. Specifically, what most was talking about consumerism in rap and all these things, and it, I thought of it because of, you know, uh, the Roots song "What They Do." Yeah. You guys we was just talking about, and and this idea of hyper consumerism in rap, you know, or specifically like trying to be everything to everybody and yeah. all of these kind of touch points that was in that convo. What's your opinion on that? Well, uh, you know, I wrote a song called I "Used to Love Her," and um, that joint was really speaking to that to a certain degree, like at that time, like what? Like when it started becoming real corporate um, and losing the purity of it. I think now, you know, artists can be artists, meaning like everything is, some people are like, if their intention is to just be the pop artist, um, then so be it. I think, you know, to me, um, I think Drake 
comes from hip hop. Like when I first heard him rhyming, I was like, yo, this dude rhyming. Yeah. And he was, he was, you know, and if he goes out and makes songs that are popular, that's that's what it is. But he's still an MC. He's, he's an MC. And, and, and also, Drake's never pit bull. He never went flow rider pit bull with no, the pop. No, listen. I mean, the dude is an incredible songwriter. He's a he's an incredible artist, man. Yeah. Like you don't, you can't touch that many people without being having some type of, especially on a, you know, for a long enough period of time as, right. as he's been doing it. Like right. it's pop artists. <clears throat> excuse me. It's pop artists that, that you know, they have a hit and it's gone and you don't, you forget, oh, who was that? But, I mean, this man has touched different aspects of culture, like, and been able to continue to do it. So, you know, you got to have some some respect and know that, like, yo, this dude is a, a very talented man. artist. Um, and at and, the same time, we I think you said it, Rosenberg. Um, you know everything's right in the world when most deaf has a problem with someone like Drake's consumerism. Like, that's yeah. most isn't supposed to. Right. That's what who Yasin Bey is. It's very on brand for him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo, yo, Yasin it, and Yasin yeah. is a genius, man. Like, I've I've been around that dude, and I'm like, and I've watched him as an actor, as a as an artist, and I and I listen to a lot of his raps and be like, yo, this dude is, he man, he's like very like high level when it comes to like poetic rap and just not even just poetic rap, but I'm saying he has poetry within his rap. Mm -hmm. um, and just his just can style on anything. He could do a lot. Even man. the style of the clip in which he was talking ish about Drake, within that, he was being funny and Yo, performative. And yeah. even if I, I didn't really agree with what he said, yeah. but I still was entertained to watch him do That's it. That's what and, and he go, and one thing most deaf Yasin is not gonna hold his tongue. He's a he's a warrior. He's a if he gets he's asked, he's answering. He's gonna answer. And and like you said, he did it with his personality, all that charisma and just he witty. So many funny. skills. Yeah. <laughs> as far as everything. <laughs> <laughs> he's, yo, but, but I feel like, man, we we know hip hop, like to me, hip hop, because I was I was talking about it with one of my guys. He was like, Well, what's rapping? What's hip hop? But I always looked at hip hop as like this culture and rap is a part of hip hop. Right. Like that's you know. It's, I couldn't it's, agree. With, and people love to always say like, I'll see this in my comments, and I never want to disagree with the people because I know their heart is in the right place. Yeah. But they'll be like, Yeah, but that's rap, and they're talking about hip hop. I'm like, that whole delineation. It's, it's rap is a part of hip hop. Hip -hop man. That's rap that. is the oral expression of the of, culture of hip hop. Of hip hop, man. Yeah. Simple as that. Like I mean, you got. DJing, you got graffiti, you got, you know, which are different you got expressions dances, in our different forms expressions in hip hop. Yeah. Now, and listen, do I wish every artist was like Common who performed at Hip Hop 50 at like 2 p.m. and sat there watching the show until midnight? Yeah, I wish that other artists yeah. were more like and that. Cared yeah. enough. Care, no, like literally, he was just in a zone by he himself in, yeah. in, in <laughs> the middle of Yankee Stadium where anyone could come up and talk to him yeah. and took in the entire show for 10 hours. Do I wish everyone had that love? Yes. I'm not talking about Drake specifically. Maybe he would. I don't know. Yeah. I know generally we don't see that from everyone. Yeah. And I think it's wonderful that you have that, but that's not everybody. Yeah, that's, and, and man, I mean, I ain't gonna front. Like, I feel like when I listen to a Drake, I listen to a Chance, I listen to. Kendrick, you could tell they love the art form. They're of it. They love. They come. Mm -hmm. They they come from it. They they love it. Like they they. That's what it is. And and um, you know, for me, Kendrick is like in any era, he's one of the greatest MCs, just point blank. And um, I think, yo, when you so start you putting Kendrick in your top five, I I, I would have to. Uh, you know, well, my top five is like kind of from the era that I grew no, up. I know, I know, yeah, know, yeah. But, but I just wanted to challenge but, you real but, quick. But, but, <laughs> top twenty, top twenty for sure. Like, I mean, I would have to say top ten at least. At times, he's been in my top five just by me being like real honest with what. The, if I look over the scope of hip hop, I gotta say Kendrick. Like, how many people have had four albums where like the lyrics are that great? You making different type. Them albums Very ain't different. the same. They different. Yeah. And man, this dude, I mean, one of the Portland surprise. I know that, like, maybe people are like, oh, that ain't hip hop, whatever. But that's man, that shows you your writing has went to a whole nother like stratosphere. If that many people are recognizing what you do as an MC, as a writer. So, but my, what I was about to say about hip hop, though, to me, it's like, man, we just like what we like. Man, it's okay to be like, man, some stuff I ain't into, and this and. If somebody now, their expression of hip-hop is what it is, then, man, that's the interpretation of it. We can't, like, really... I can't really say, man, that ain't, ain't hip-hop to me because 
that's that person expressing what they want, what they feel like is is hip hop to them. Whether it's, whether they calling it rap, hip hop, that's them expressing it. And it's happened at so many different times in hip hop that people forget, right? Luke yeah. Skywalker and the Two Live Crew came out. People was trying to act like that wasn't hip hop. Cash Money came around. There was discussions that that wasn't yeah. no limit. There was discussion, oh, that ain't hip hop because it was yeah. from a different place, a different geography, or whatever. So this always happens. Yeah. The other thing that always happens is people try to like uh, 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 splinter hip hop into these subcategories that are like, oh, you know, that's trap, that ain't rap, or that's trap, yeah, that ain't hip hop, crazy too. that ain't... Like it's its like, own genre I mean, altogether. I'm like, I it's all hip hop, man. <laughs> At the end of the day, I mean, it's either you like it or you don't. Or if it's you good like, or it's, it's bad. Like, yeah, it's like, you, you know, it's all right, man. If it's all food, you sometimes you don't like, you might not like, I don't like macaroni and cheese. People be like, damn, man. Wait, what? How you gonna be black and not like Wait, macaroni what? and cheese? <laughs> you, and, you and Mark Lamont Hill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, that was a crazy take from Mark. Mark goes, yo. Yeah. Venom for mac, mac and cheese on Thanksgiving. I know. Like, I've never even seen anything like it. Yeah, no. Nah, I mean, my point is like, yo, we ain't gonna like everything. So, wait, you don't like cheese on <laughs> pasta? Well, he's a vegan, Baked? too. Well, well, I well, I used to love cheese, but I still like, I like the vegan cheese. Now, Chef Lauren Vanderpool gets down on that vegan cheese. But me, and, me and her wife make a mean vegan mac. She's mostly vegan, too. But I don't, I, I, the mac and cheese never did it for me, bro. Like, I don't even know what Even when it, you was on? When, young, no, nah, younger growing up, I never. I'm, I'm like collard greens and, and um, that's candy good too. yams. That's you good know? too. All yeah, that's good too. Yeah. But maybe just you don't like the actual macaroni. That's you don't yeah, like that that's pasta. That's exactly. just, you like, so do you like pasta? I love pasta. I, uh, he just doesn't like, like that, that combination. That's that noodle. It. That noodle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That noodle. Yeah. That noodle is the. Problem. And that, that lack of sauce. Like you're going to just cheese. It's you're not getting cheese. A sauce. No, it's no sauce. I like marinara sauce or something <laughs> okay, that right, goes right, pesto right, sauce okay, or something. Right, you know. Right, right. See, we all have different flavors. Yeah, flavors. You see what I'm saying? It's in the concept of hip hop. Might not be hip hop. All this mac and cheese talk. All this mac and cheese. Yo, give it up for our brother Common Man. Get that new book, and then we rise out everywhere right now. Thank you, man. Thank you, Thank you, brother. Oh, yeah.